composite, so the whole grill radiator support, they saved like seven pounds and still had it, and they saved the seven pounds in front, which is where you want it to be saved. What time did the test drive begin? I know. Uh, uh, August? You know that's going to happen, right? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. value. I'm not going to say it's going to be cheap, right? But if you think of all the stuff we've done from, from the Focus SVT to the Contour to the old Cobras to Terminators, while they were inexpensive, from a performance value standpoint, we will still be, we will still have things in the car that you can't get at any price. Like, it, it will be over 5, you know, 5.2 liters, it will be over 100 horsepower with a flat plane crank. There's nobody I'm aware of on the planet that goes over 4.2 liters right now, right? I mean, so you, you can't get, I don't care what you write the checkbook for, there's no production company that does it. Um, when, when we say over 500 horsepower, I'm not saying 501, 502. I'm legitimately, I know what this one, this one, Dino, before it came out, I know exactly what this Dino had, and it is over 500 horsepower. Um, I, I, mean, I know what it is. Um, so, so what will happen? Yeah, well, I mean, Hellcat over 500, right? Hellcat, what, 701, 707? So I would, I would challenge you to take a 14 GT500 to an independent dyno and test it and tell me what it comes back and tells you. More than, uh, of the media cars that we did, the 20 media cars, more than 10 of them were equal to what Dodge is playing. Um, that's what Dodge is playing. Yeah. Um, and the majority of them are we, we, we made a mistake a long time ago and we overcalled horsepower. We will never, ever, ever do that again. Um, yeah. and, and, Car and Carol, before he passed away, always told me that, you know, until the damn SAE got involved, horsepower was a marketing number. <laughs> so it'll be well over it. But it'll be a relative performance value. And this is the track pack. I'm sorry, this is the tech pack. So in the tech pack, you get the heated and cooled seats. You get an eight and a half inch screen, you'll get Sync 3, you'll get more of the creature comforts, you'll still get the brakes, the Magna Ride, the same calibration, um, same horsepower, all of that. The track pack version of this car, smaller screen, Recaro seats, um, much bigger wing on the back, functional and why we have it out there. Um, but pricing won't be why you choose it. So what you're going to be choosing, we're, instead of Shelby GT500, which went you know, base, and then you put the electronics package on it, and the performance package on it, and then you put the over-the-top racing track in, you just built it vertically. This one, you, and, and we're doing the pricing, sorry, I'm submitting the pricing to the group vice president on April 2nd, we're not going to make you choose. We're going to make you choose based on what do you want to do That's with the car. That's great. Yeah, and, and so, you know, um, there are some creature comforts in here that you're not going to get in the, in, in the track pack. Um, it's not, and then the R, you'll have two flavors. No. I mean, and, I, and actually with the R compound, that the that, uh, Ford Cup 2 on the R's, no need. No need. Uh, so when is the new uh, this one's good. Huh? race car coming in? 
Dr. Boss 302S. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> Did I ever say there was one? I'm sorry. Did, I, you never said there was one. I didn't say there wasn't. <laughs> Did not say there wasn't. I didn't, I didn't say. I didn't say that there's not a contractual agreement between Ford that might and Shelby that might cover that. I didn't say that. That it wasn't either. Um, so uh, what, what, where do they place the next year on this? Eighty-two fifty. Really? Wow. It legit, like legit, legit. Like last night. Like five-two flat plane spinning that fast. I mean, if you think of the, and I'm a marketing guy, not engineer, right? So you think of the flat plane. So you have balance. I mean, that wants to rattle the thing apart. I mean, you think, you think 8,000 RPMs under that load. I mean, you know, it, the reason that you don't have flat plane cranks in normal engines is the balance. Right? I mean, it makes it smoother and easier and less vibrational. Because rather than tunk, 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 tunk. Yeah, exactly. And that gives you some... Oh, and torque, and gives lighter weight. Yeah, yeah, there, there are the resources. Well, how do, how do you say this? If you look at this, in, you know, I'm most of you guys know. I mean, look, I've been doing this with SVT since 2003, right? I, I, I really believe in the SVT branding and in the engineering men and women who do it. They haven't gone away, right? They're globalizing under the Ford Performance moniker. So you have Team RS, SVT, the old um, FPV out of Australia. Um, all of those groups under one leader, leader, L-E-A-D-E-R, not L-I-T-R-E, um, who was the one who delivered the Boss 302 and the same thing. So you have the right guy running, right? He's a performance guy. And then you have Raj Nair, who's the group vice president of product development, who you know, does this on the weekends like us, right? I mean, this is what he does. Um, and then you have like Farley, who's, who was the vice president of marketing, he's now over in Europe. He's actually racing a 66 GT350 in the modern So, so you have some. Oh, the guy who runs marketing for Ford Performance. I recognize his name. Henry Ford III. Really? So, so you know, and he was with me when I was working for Carol on the KR program. He owns a KR. His brother Calvin owns a Boss 302. His brother Stuart owns a Shelby Post Title for GT350. Now Albert, the youngest one, I got in a lot of trouble with. That's his wife. Right. I'm down at Daytona. And this is Albert is 19 now. He's one. And uh, and he's the one who suffers from juvenile diabetes. And so I have him down there at Daytona, and we have this really tweaked up 2012 Shelby GT500. We did it with the Haggerty Fantasy Pit, right? So it had 750 horse, big whipple blower, all this stuff in there. And we had a 13 down there. I'm like, come on, Albert, let's like, drive him around, take him around. I mean, we're on the track, all over the place. I'm like, okay, now Albert, here's the deal. So we got to buy that car so you can take the rest of your brother's ass. Right? Because it's 662 horsepower minimum, and I know the biggest horsepower your brother has is Henry, who has 630 on with his Ford Racing Glory on his KR. I'm like, you gotta go. And so I'm like, yeah, you know, what do we do? We'll take care of it, don't worry about it. I get a call from Edsel on the cell phone to me saying, let me ask you this. Did you tell Albert you build him a GT500? I'm like, yes, of course I did. I'm like, you know, I want him to be in the Henry He's like, next time you talk to me first. <laughs> and so, I mean, the, my point for bringing up all of that is the people whose name that is and the people who are running the company believe in this shit just like we do. Some of them do it on the weekends and race. Some of them do it under their namesake. And, and they're all into it. So we're going to put the efforts in to engineer stuff even when it's well, funny, funny. Yeah. Uh, my student, Mark one of my students. Mark's doing good. Uh, yeah, he's good. I haven't seen him probably. Uh, he went to, he went to Europe or where did he go? China. Yeah, I haven't seen him. I don't know. I think his wife is actually excited about it. I think it kind of took him a little bit out of the whole NASA American Iron Series type, you know, spending his weekend around cars and actually spending time with his family. So, I mean, it, I can't wait to see him. Yeah, he was the back there with us. So, we're, we're going to have an awful lot of fun marketing this car. While I don't have what in Ford speak is the approval to spend the money, I have the money, like, assigned. 
I don't have the approval to spend it yet. Um, the best way to demonstrate this car to consumers and dealers are on racetracks. And I am trouble for you saying this. Um, let's just say what made the Cobras famous was that it went to world class race facilities and beat everything that it could, right? Yeah. So it beat everything. The GT 350s, SCCA yeah. Production B, went to some of the North American world famous road courses and demonstrated its prowess. Might be deja vu. You never know. <laughs> I'm really hoping, you know, Laguna, so Laguna Snake, uh, Road America, Watkins Glen once it's repaved, Sebring, Lime Rock. I can't afford Coda, although I really want to try. It's kind of cool. I've just been familiar with they know people. Miller guys, instructors coming out, and now you might have a track attack program. So, so we're going to market this as you know, the fastest production Mustang on a road course. Everybody wants to, you know, they know about this. Sure, they want to appreciate what you're doing. Of course, they're Mustangs. That's so good. That's so good. I remember racing Dean in go-karts. He's flipped the damn thing and cost us three grand. We're like, oh, we don't need the insurance. <laughs> Should have done it. Dean was airborne in this car. Thanks, guys. Um, but the carbon bar yeah. composite grill opening radiator support it took about seven pounds off of the front end and kept the torsional rigidity that they needed. You guys can see a much bigger air box yeah. seal yeah. over there coming in. So, so is this a bolt? Is this usually a more like a bolt? This is like a bolt. So they don't auto it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and they don't, you know, vacuum bag it. I don't know how they actually do it. Cool. But that's fantastic. And, uh, it's one of the pieces that we did. And then what we'll do when we uh, when we uh, go on tour, because there's the air management, there's underbelly cam in the front, so right about here, and then from the back, from here all the way back, and it's part of the air management system, so when we display it, we're going to flip it up on its side, and we're going to make the belly pans clear plastic, and we're going to show the airflow with the air ropes going through. So, because it, the, the, the work they had to do between coefficient of drag and downforce was, you know, because those are two mutually exclusive things, and they balance it. Yeah. And uh, actually, this one, yeah, we're going to use in the back. I was just excited to see one of the five twos. We were thinking yeah. that we weren't gonna get one with the with the new voodoo, so yeah, well um, somebody took the car that we were supposed to use. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it was at the Richmond, Virginia Auto Show. And then somebody there used the front splitter as a stepping oh, no. pulled the front fascia down. So Eric, the gentleman over there in the beard. Yeah. Ran down to the plant and picked this one up. This is the first TT that we've had out. So. And so the TT is one of the. It's basically it's off the production line, but it's not for public sale. It'll be used oh, well, by Oh, it's even or? worse than that. Okay. It is off the production line, but the parts. I mean, you can see the fit and finish, right? Okay. Yeah. That's not how that's going to eventually <laughs> be, right? So all of the parts that made this car. Uh, all the tools are not production tools. Gotcha. Okay. Right, so they, they do the technical tool build to evaluate the tools before they go to production tools. Yeah, that's what the TT stands for. 
TT is technical tool build, and then you get PP build, which is production prototype, and then you'll have MP1 builds, which is mass production. So at, at PP, all of the tooling that they learn here will be then addressed, and it will be the first cars off of production tooling. That's basically finish things. Yeah. So, like, we're going to have to go back, because this car is going to go to uh, Miller with a couple others for photography and video, and Eric and his crew, right when they get back, will have to be adjusting it, and so we can do photo. No, we love doing it. This is where it belongs. Any any truth to the production run numbers that are floating around the internet? I would say that it you would be safe in saying somewhere between a Boss 302 number and the current GT500 production number. And I wouldn't be surprised if the R might have, might be akin to 302 in the same. Okay. Wow, that's great. Okay. So if I get my way. <laughs> so we'll save one for me. We'll save, yeah. Like Jay Lowe used to say with the Doritos commercial. Don't worry, we'll make more. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys.